It's about time you got here. I am bubbling over with excitement. We got a great show today. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, and it is the first day of November. It's Wednesday. Tomorrow being Thursday, I've got my live streaming event. I do this every week, 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Me and my co-host Taylor, we're there for an hour. We're there to talk to you about stocks you're interested in. I share stocks with you all week. This gives you a chance to share stocks with us. Now, I am hoping you bring us some hot stocks, but I'll look at whatever stock you want us to. I'll go over the information, Taylor will look at the chart, and we'll give you our opinion, whatever that's worth. That's 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Also want to let you know, I don't do this often enough, that these videos are brought to you because of Penny Boys. That's my Discord group. That's who has me do these. We cover everything in Penny Boys. OTC and Penny Stocks, Blue Chip Stocks, Tokens, NFTs, Cryptocurrencies, Sports Betting. If you want people to talk to or actually trading through the day or you want an education, come on over folks. I got an invite down there from the wizard. Just click that button, come on in. And look for me, the Stocks Wizard. Now, before we jump into these hot stocks, which I find every single day, stocks under five bucks on any market that have potential to make us money. And I find the stocks by looking at charts. I don't go through the news and the filings trying to determine what's hot. I look at the charts that I can determine what's hot. And when I find a chart that has heat, maybe volume coming in or a breakout setup or some big bounces, when I find a chart like that, then I'll go rummaging around through the press releases and the filings looking for that catalyst. When I find a hot piece of news or a filing to match up to that hot chart, I got myself a hot penny stock. And these are the sort of stocks I share with you every day. And as I said, before we jump into the hot stocks I got for you today, I've got some hot charts. Well, interesting charts. Let's put it that way to share with you. Don't have a lot of charts to share with you. Only two. And I wouldn't exactly call them hot charts either, but I definitely call them interesting with potential. First one we're considering is EARI, Entertainment Arts Research. Now we're looking at a six month, four hour view. That's how I do my due diligence looking for charts with heat. Now what drew my attention to this as I was scanning charts was all that volume. That's a ton of volume, right folks? That is a silent killer, a tsunami. Well, of course there has to be a catalyst, right? I didn't find anything. No new news, no fresh filings, no super small float, nothing. But we do have just a little bit of turnaround right now. She's been flat, flat, flat for a while. She is just now pushing up on top of the 50. But really, there's no spark to be seen in the charts, only in the volume. So even though I can't find anything anywhere else, the chart says I should be watching this. The other one you may want to keep your eye on is ticker FZRO. Now, the reason I like this chart is because of her bounces. She has bounces on regular basis. Now, I'm not saying every day, but they're close enough that you wouldn't mind waiting around for the next one. This one, we probably should have expected whatever happened here. She was doing nothing. She jumped 1,500% on August 30th. Then on October 9th, we had a 330% run. And then today, we had a 300% run. Now, they have all fallen back down, but they had to go up first. And that's when you catch your gains. So, you may want to keep your eye on those two. Looks like you could catch something when things happen. Now, I've got three stocks to share with you that I am excited to share with you. There is some very interesting news to go with these. Our first penny stock definitely qualifies as a hot penny stock. This is American Airs, ticker A-A-I-R-F, AIRF. Now, if you were trading today, if you were looking at your scanners at any point in time, chances are you saw this stock up at the top. She was hot today. Her low yesterday was just over a nickel. We're just about 15 cents right now. So from yesterday's low to here, that is about a 300% gain. And as you can see, we finished the day with over 180% gains. Now, her chart's been cold for a very long time, virtually a year. It was between a penny and four cents. That was it. And then on September 20th, she started to climb and she took off. 
She took a big rip, then she took a big dip, then she took another big rip, then another big dip. And that's what she's doing over and over again, climbing uphill. And since September 20th, she has gone up 1,500%. Now, when it comes to catalysts, her catalysts are lukewarm at best. And the reason I say that is because they're old. Not real old. They're just not today or yesterday's news. They're a little bit old, but they are hot, important pieces of news. And when you have a hot chart, you don't have to have a hot piece of news. Just a warm piece of news can keep that chart running. So air finished the day today, just about 15 cents with over 180% gains. And she's on the pink tier. She's current. She's got a transfer agent verified, which is one of those precious green ticks I'm always telling you to look for. She doesn't have the other one, verified profile. Now, the reason I tell you to look for them is they're validated information. And when you're trading pinks, you don't get any validated information, not even with their financials. So any validated information is good. Now, it's not a deal breaker that they're not there, but it is much more reassuring knowing they are. Now, this is surprising. They've got independent directors listed here. You need independent directors to uplist, and you must list them over here when you have aspirations of uplisting. Now, I haven't read it anywhere, but I haven't gone through a bunch of filings, and it's going to be in one of them if they're going to do it. And it could be to the QB, or it could be to the NASDAQ. I don't know, but I do see them listed there. So what is American Airs about? Well, we could use this description, but I got a better one. They tell us over here that American Airs is a Canadian technology company focused on the research, the development, and the implementation of innovative devices that help eliminate the harmful effects of electromagnetic radiation, EMR, which is emitted from everyday electronic devices, including cell phones, tablets, Wi-Fi routers, microwaves, baby monitors, smart TVs, laptops, and the list goes on and on. And they are now using their findings to develop globally recognized, scientifically backed technology that restructures and transforms electric magnetic field haze into more biologically compatible form to reduce the harmful effects of EMR. The company's won numerous awards, gold medals, and certifications since 2000. The company has 11 patents, 14 patents pending, and 18 trademarks pending. Now, these are their products. Very interesting looking. Now, from what I can gather, this little one here is for a device. It'll take care of the electromagnetic field around the device. This one here looks to be about the size of a smartphone. And this is one for you to keep your space safe. And then you've got this one down here, which is good for your space and your immediate surroundings as well. <laughs> Do some more due diligence. I have not dove into this very deep. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Well, that's a big jump. That is 500% increase, but it is a very low number. All of them. Her average for the last 30 days has been under 1,000 shares, 904. Today, she did a whopping 5,037 shares. But look at the gains. Oh, my God. Imagine what will happen when volume comes in. What is the share structure? Do we have a low float? Well, no, not exactly. Not that I can see. Outstanding share count is at 59 million. I don't know what the float is. I know it's not going to be more than 59 million, and it could be anywhere below it. So it could be considerably less. And the way the stock's moving, I'm thinking it is. Market cap is really low on this, 3.1 million. Financials for Air. So she has been growing. Oh, no, 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 no. These are outdated. That ain't right. That's from 2019. That's from 2020. I was ahead of this. I'm over here at Yahoo Finance. They do have financials and they are current. So we are looking here back to 2019. Oh my God. Now we got to add three zeros to any of these numbers as well. So this is 5.8 million right there. Well, <laughs> that right there is 693 million in 2019. Look, I know COVID hit a lot of companies hard, but boom. From 693 down to 2.3 million, there's got to be more to the story than that. In any case, 
They fell down to 2.3 and have been climbing since then, 2021 to 2.5. Uh, more than doubled that in 2022 to 5.8 million. Now, in my last video, I thought this TTM was a uh, total to month. I thought it was like a monthly calendar. It isn't. TTM stands for trailing 12 months. In other words, how much money they've made from today going back a year. So up to this point, they have done $7 million in the last year. When last year, they did $5.8 million. So we can see their financials are growing. Let's take a look at those disclosures. Now, if memory serves, we don't have anything here. Nope, but we do have news. Now, I did tell you the news is old, but it's hot news. It's big news. We've got three pieces, one in August, one in September, one in October. I'm going to look at two of these, but we're going to headline them right here. American Airs announces partnership agreement with Huck Project. In September, the company announces a share consolidation. But fear not, that is not American stock, that's Canadian stock. They did a 1 in 10 reverse split over there, bringing the share count from 160 million down to 16 million. And that won't affect us over here, except to say it is the same company. These are just shares on separate markets. So if they felt the need to do a reverse split over in Canada, are they going to feel the need to do one over here in the U.S.? I don't know, but it is worth considering. And the other piece of news, American Airs announces debt settlement and equity incentive grants. Now, I want to take a look at the first and the last one here. The first one came out on the 28th. They tell us that the company announces a partnership agreement with Huck Project, whereby Huck becomes the company's non-exclusive global retail-only distribution partner. This partnership agreement bears a two-fold rationale. Firstly, management believes that this outsourcing strategically positions the company as a pure biotechnology firm. With Huck committing its resources to retail operations, the company plans to focus on research and development, new product development, and engaging into larger and more lucrative original equipment manufacture deals. This new focus and royalty-based revenues are anticipated to reshape the company's operations and the investor's perception. Secondly, by outsourcing retail operations to Huck, the company transfers the inventory financing burden over to Huck, a U.S.-based entity which is better positioned to source financing options to support the growing inventory investments. So they've got a partner here that they are going to handle all the retail aspects of their business while the company now gets back to research and development, creating more products to sell. That other piece of news came out on the 19th of October. The company entered into shares for debt settlement agreements dated October 17th for a total amount of 810,000 Canadian dollars, almost a million bucks. As a final step of the restructuring of the company that took place this year, we are proud to announce that to date, all the convertible debiture investors, as well as certain arm's length and related parties, agreed to convert their outstanding debt into common shares of the company and become investors instead. Not only does this help clean up our balance sheet, no debt, but it also shows the confidence that our investors and stakeholders have in the future of this company. And then the bottom half is about their equity incentives. We're not going to go into any of this. These are bonuses that the management will get when they hit milestones for doing a good job. So they've got a new partner that's taken over certain responsibilities, allowing them to do more of what they want to do, and they're now debt-free. Plus, they got incentives to do a good job. So we got lots of little catalysts here on a hot chart. Let me show you these big bounces up and down. Taking a look at American Airs, we're going to chart it on my free trading platform, Thinkorswim. You get this free when you sign up with TD Ameritrade. And signing up with them, that's free too. So we are looking at ticker AAIRF. This is a one-day, one-year chart. She hasn't been doing anything up until September 14th. I thought her high was four cents, it was actually five cents, not a big difference. And jumping down to that six month, four hour chart, it doesn't look a lot different. 
Now, it was right here she actually started her bounce, which was on the 20th. She was at just over a penny and went all the way up to six and a half cents. That was 650% gains just in that bar. But you had some aftermarket activity, which took it up to 9.2. So you're looking at 900% gains in that one day. When she fell back, she fell to her nine day SMA, climbed that some more, hitting 11.8. We're now at 1,100% gains. Then we had a big fall. She came all the way down here and she did not bounce on the 50. She's bouncing on the new 200 day haul. 200 day haul is a lot like your 200 day SMA. Takes 200 days of prices, averages them all together, but gives more credence to current prices. It's a different line in a different place and penny stocks have been respecting it here recently. Off of that 200, she took a nice bounce. She went from four and a half cents up to 12 and a half cents. There's another 200% gains. Came back down this time, bouncing off the 50, at about a nickel, and then she ran up here to that 16 cents, over 300% gains from yesterday, falling back to just about 15 cents now. Some huge rips, huge dips, giving us new huge rips. This looks nice, folks. All of our SMAs are in right position and pushing up. No volume to talk about. Imagine when volume comes in. Our osculators are looking good. My PPO, percentage price osculator, which is very much like the MACD. MACD uses the full price, percentage price osculator. That's right, Tommy. It uses the percentage of the price. Both of these are climbing right now. And our RSI, that's up there at 61, though it is going sideways. Checking out our 20-day, one-hour view. All right, we don't have a lot of trading. Look, we got one bar on each day. That's all we're getting here. She came down to this low, bouncing off of the 50 at 4.7 cents. Bounced off of that, jumping to 13 cents. Holy cow. It's just that little short gap right there, folks. We have a 300% run. She came back down here, breaking the... 50, coming to a nickel, jumping to 16 cents, another 300% run, came down and she's climbing again. This looks fun. <laughs> That's what it looks. It looks fun. Our osculators, our PPO is climbing, our MACD is climbing, RSI has dropped just a little bit. Can you believe that? She is climbing. All of our SMAs are going up. Our price is climbing and our RSI fell. Though right now she's going sideways. She's at 58. Five day, five minute. We don't get a lot here. Um, she's on an uptrend. That's it, right? We have higher lows on every single bar here. We've got more volume increasing and our nine day SMA is going uphill. As is all of our osculators and we don't have an RSI here yet. So she is looking hot, but her, her catalysts are old. We need a new catalyst, but I would put AARF on my watch list. She's got some huge bounces, folks. Those are nice 300% gains on each one of those. And she is climbing piece of news. Who knows what she could do? Well, for lack of a better word, we got ourselves a rocket stock here. I don't normally look at rocket stocks, but this has got one heck of a catalyst. This is Selectus, ticker CLLS. Again, if you were looking at your scanners today, you saw this up at the top. She ran up over 200% gains, running from 99 cents to 299 before pulling back. She had some tremendous news come out today, which has a lot more to offer than I think most people are aware, and I'm excited to share this with you. CLLS finished the day at $2.64 with over 172% gains today. This one is on the NASDAQ, so you're going to be able to trade this for free. You can trade it pre-market, after-market, and I would suggest you watch it pre-market, after-market. Stocks like this can move in those periods. So what is this company about? Selectus is a clinical stage biotechnology company using its pioneering gene editing platform to develop life-saving cell and gene therapies. Selectus utilizes an allergenic approach for CAR-T immunotherapies in oncology, pioneering the concept of off-the-shelf and ready-to-use gene-edited 
CAR T cells to treat cancer patients and a platform to make therapeutic gene editing stem cells for various diseases. Now there's a lot more information we can go into about the company, but it's really about the catalyst right now. So if you want to know what the company does, I'll let you do that due diligence. So what was the relative volume around the company's big news today? Let's see. Oh my God, what an explosion, folks. Folks, the volume has been so horrific. Looking at any stock, you're going, is that all they're doing? I think uh, this company did three times as many shares today as the SPY. Can you imagine that? She is normally only doing 66,000 shares a day. Today, she broke 75 million shares. <laughs> Share structure for CLS. Well, we know the outstanding share count. That's about 45 million. No clue what the float is. Won't be any higher than the outstanding share count and could be considerably less. Market cap, we are at 44 million. What are the financials for Selectus? Well, let's see what we got here. Ups and downs. 2019, we're at 22 million. Jumped up to 60 million. Fell back to just under 40. And right now, we're just over 25 million. But they get to keep most of that money. They got to keep almost 24 million out of that 25.7 million. Looking at our quarterlies. Eh, these NASDAQ stocks don't like to give us quarterlies. Balance sheet. Money in the bank. We have got 89 million. Money owed to them, about 15 million. Add up all their assets together, they got just over a quarter billion, 261 million. Total liabilities, 143 million. Come down here and add up the stockholders' equity. What we end up with is $261 million in stockholder equity. This is good. We like positive numbers for our shareholder equity. Disclosures. We've got a lot of 6Ks over here, and most of them correlate the news. Though one of them correlates to them registering their company over in Paris, France for 99 years. That's what it said. Let's take a look at that news now. Now, we do have a variety of news over here. Most of it is about clinical data, proof of concept, stuff like that. The big important news came out today. Selectus announces strategic collaboration and investment agreements with AstraZeneca, a huge biotech pharmaceutical company. They tell us here that the collaboration will leverage the company's gene editing technologies and manufacturing capabilities to develop up to 10 novel cell and gene therapy candidate products. The company will receive up to $245 million in cash, up to $220 million in equity investment, and $25 million as an upfront payment, with the potential for additional milestone payments, plus tiered royalties. You're talking money on top of money on top of money. They tell us that the company announced it had entered into a joint research collaboration agreement with AstraZeneca. Under the terms of the collaboration agreement, AstraZeneca will leverage the company's proprietary gene editing technologies and manufacturing capabilities to design novel cell and gene therapy candidate products. As part of the collaboration agreement, 25 genetic targets have been exclusively reserved for AstraZeneca, from which up to 10 candidate products could be explored for development. AstraZeneca will have an option for a worldwide exclusive license on the candidate products to be exercised before the introduction of the drugs to the FDA. Pursuant to the collaboration agreement, the company will receive an upfront payment of $25 million. Then they can receive milestone payments ranging from $70 million to $220 million per each of the 10 candidate products plus those tiered royalties. More though, <laughs> this is where it starts getting real exciting. I think people just got bored reading. As a condition to the signing of the collaboration agreement, AstraZeneca has agreed to make an initial, in the beginning, an initial equity investment of $80 million in the company, subscribing to $16 million of ordinary shares. 
These aren't preferred Bs or preferred Cs, which they're going to do again. They're going to not get another $140 million if things go well, and they're going to create a new class of stock for them. But right now, right here, AstraZeneca is going to be buying 16 million shares of the common stock at $5 a share. What is the price? It is $2.64 right now. Do you think there's a chance it could go up? I think there's a chance. They tell us here that um, this is to happen by November 6th. This is November 1st, folks. So this big investment into the common shares from AstraZeneca should happen in five days. AstraZeneca will own approximately 22% of the company and have 21% of voting rights for the company. Now think about that. This company is now under one of the wings of AstraZeneca. We are hobnobbing with one of the biggest pharmaceutical companies in America. I think this is really going to help this stock, as if it hasn't helped already. She took off like lightning today. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Taking a look at a one-day, one-year chart for Selectus. This is ticker CLLS. We have got a 52-week high in January of $4.04 and a 52-week low October 24th of $0.96. Cents. Now, we've got a very curious resistance here. She starts right here when the price broke through the 200. When she came back down under the 200 and broke through it again, she went to that same spot, $2.98. Then she fell under the 200, deep this time, down to this low, and today she did it again. She broke through the 200 and went all the way up to that 298 before falling back to 264. Looking at our six month, four hour view. So she's been on a downtrend with a nice rip and dip here, and I'm not sure what that was all about, but she just tumbled all the way down here to 96 cents and didn't do anything after hitting it. She just went sideways for a few days until this astronomical news came out about AstraZeneca. She has been running pre-market through the day and after market. She is running, starting off at 99 cents, hitting 299 and pulling back to that 264. And I'm wondering how many people know that AstraZeneca is going to be buying 16 million shares at $5 on November 6th. All of our uh, SMAs are looking good now. Even our 200 is starting to turn up. This was a downtrend. She is now starting to turn. Things are looking good. And look at our osculators. They are ripping. Our PPO is literally going to the moon like our, our MACD. And our RSI is clear up at 86.5 right now. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. Just nothing going on here. She was just sliding downhill and going even deeper. Went sideways and had that tremendous run. Most of it all took place pre-market. That's what I was telling you. You've got to watch these stocks that are hot pre-market, after-market. They do some huge movements then. Don't be afraid to buy and sell in the pre-market. Don't think it's going to keep running after-market. You would be amazed how many fall after these huge bounces pre-market. So she did have a fall. She started down here at $0.99, cents, ran to 280 when she came on the market, she fell down to 217 and then pushed herself back up to 299 before falling back down to the nine day SMA, which is where she's sitting right now, looking righteous. It does not look bad at all. All of our other SMAs are looking sweet. They are all crossing the now uptrending 200 day SMA. Volume, as I said, was incredible today compared to any of the days before. Oscillators are still very strong, but there is some pullback with this dip right there. But nothing looks bad. Coming down to that five-day, five-minute. <laughs> All right. Slippity-doo-dah, doing nothing. Rip, bounce, dip. We got a W here. You see our W? W is for winner. Normally, at the end of the W, you see a run. We had a dip and a run there. She has been going sideways. And she took a dip after market. Now, I'm thinking she is waiting for this 200-day SMA to come up. She was very close to it. She got way far away from it. And she got a good run on it. And she's not giving up her gains. She's not throwing them all away by coming down to the 200. She's waiting for it to come to her. And that's what I think will happen. Now, <laughs> that's not counting pre-market. 
Pre-market is the wild, wild west. You never know what's going to go on there, and it happens fast, and it happens furiously. So honestly, I would be watching this tomorrow morning, pre-market if you're up, but I would keep an eye on it through the day as well. This is big news, and November 6th is when AstraZeneca is going to buy their shares. <laughs> That's the day you want to pay attention to CLLS. This next stock we're taking a look at, it is exciting. It's mind-boggling. It's even scary. You think I'm kidding, don't you? We'll see. This is QBTS, D-Wave Quantum. This is a quantum computing business. And as far as I've seen, there's only two companies on the open market. So it's a very small sector. And I think quantum computing is going to be astronomically huge in the future. How? I don't know. I don't know. It's just that it has the capabilities to do so much, things we can't even imagine. And I'm going to share some information with you that is literally going to blow your mind. So her chart, it's in recovery mode right now. She had a big drop from about $3.80 down to $0.80. Cents, and right now it looks like she's about ready to break out. And she has had some big news. So QBTS, she finished the day at about $0.80.5. Cents with almost 12% gains. She too is on the major exchange, but she's on the New York Stock Exchange. But you're still going to be able to trade this for free and trade at pre-market, after-market as well. So what is this company about? Well, they tell us over here that D-Wave is a leader in the development and delivery of quantum computing systems, software, and services, and is the world's first commercial supplier of quantum computers, and the only company building both annealing quantum computers and gate model quantum computers. <laughs> As if we'd know the difference. Our mission is to unlock the power of quantum computing today to benefit businesses and society. We do this by delivering customer value and practice quantum applications for problems as diverse as logistics, artificial intelligence, material sciences, drug discovery, scheduling, cybersecurity, fault detection, and financial modeling. D-Wave's customers include Volkswagen, MasterCard, Deloitte, Davison Technologies, and a whole bunch more. Now, I don't want you to think of quantum computing as computers. They are nothing like computers. Absolutely nothing. It's a completely different beast. Our computers are two-stage, a zero and a one. You're either up and down, off and on, left or right, that's it. And you can only be one at a time. A quantum computer has four stages. Yes, no, one I'm not real sure of, and one yes and no at the same time. How's that possible? Well, it is with quantum computing. And with that paradox, when you have a yes and a no at the same time, the lapping over of the two creates a nexus for a parallel dimension. You think I'm kidding, don't you? I told you this was going to be scary. I've got a film clip I want to share with you here. This is about two and a half minutes long, and it's going to be worth your time. It is from the CEO and the founder of this company talking about D-Wave, quantum computing, and just one of the remarkable things that it can do. Are you ready for this? In quantum mechanics, there's this concept that an, an, a, a thing can exist in two states which are mutually exclusive at the same time, quote unquote. So and I'm using those words because the English language was developed before we had concepts to describe what these things actually are doing. But I'm going to give you a, a, a roundabout way of understanding this. Imagine that there really are parallel universes out there, and now imagine you have two that are exactly identical in every respect, all the way out to the horizon, as far as we can see, down to the last little atomic detail of every single thing, with only one difference. And that's the value of a little thing called a qubit on this chip, which is a contraction of quantum bit. And that qubit is very much like a bit or a transistor in a conventional computer. It has two distinct physical states, which we call zero and one for bit. In a conventional computer, these are mutually exclusive. That device is either one or the other and never anything else. In a quantum computer, that device can be in this strange situation where these two parallel universes have a nexus 
a point in space where they overlap. And when you increase the number of these devices, you, every time you add one of these qubits, you double the number of these parallel universes that you have access to until such time when you get to a chip like this, which is about 500 of these bits, you have something like two to the 500th power of these guys living in that chip. So the way I think about it is that the shadows of these parallel worlds overlap with ours. And if we're smart enough, we can dive into them and grab their resources and pull them back into ours to make an effect in our world. Now this may sound very odd to you and bizarre, and in fact I am using language that a normal theoretical physicist probably wouldn't use, but this is, what I'm telling you is absolutely correct and in line with the way that these things actually work. We've been doing this for some time now, and in fact we have our own version of Moore's Law. The doubling uh, of the number of these qubits on the chip has happened once a year for the past nine years. So for the last nine years, every year, the number of these qubit devices has doubled and it will continue to do so. So now that you know more than you really wanted to, mind boggling, right? Scary, right? I don't know how I feel about it. In another video he does, he says that we are exploiting technology. Mind boggling, right? Even scary? He's got another video out, a lecture, where he is talking about how they are exploiting this technology from these other dimensions. Exploiting. I don't like that term. That doesn't sound very friendly to me. And if they're getting technology, there must be intelligent life in these other dimensions. Do you think they like being exploited? In any case, we are now looking at the relative volume for the company. She's normally doing 1.2 million shares. Today, she did just a little over 2 million shares. Share structure for QBTS. Outstanding share count is just under 100 million. Don't know what the float is. It could be up to 100 million or it could be a lot less. Your guess is as good as mine. Market cap for the company, we are at $71.5 million. Looking at the financials for D-Wave. Back in 2020, they were doing $5.1 million. 2021, 6.2, kicked it up to 7.1, and they're getting to keep most of that, $4.2 million. Looking at the quarterly, well, the New York Stock Exchange gives us quarterlies. Last year, she was at $1.3 million for that quarter. She's had some ups and downs, and right now we're at $1.7 million with about $700,000 profit. Looking at the balance sheet for the company, they got money in the bank. They got $7.5 million. Uh, they've got inventory. What sort of inventory do you have with quantum computing? Total assets for the company, just about $25 million. Total liabilities, ouch, $52 million. Ooh, we're lucky. There was some extra numbers here. Retained earnings, $427 million and capital surplus. Wonder what the heck that was, $409 million. So when you add it all up, we end up with 25 million above shareholder equity value. So we do have good numbers here for us. Disclosures for the company. Let's see what we got over here in the bank. We've got $7.5 million. Inventory, inventory for quantum computing of 2.3 million. Add up all their assets, they got 25 million. Add up all their liabilities, ouch, double. But somehow, through all of their math, they tell us total liabilities and stockholder equity is positive 25 million, so that's good. Looking at our disclosures, we do have a few over here. One of these is about a loan agreement they're making. One of them is a notice from the New York Stock Exchange that they've been under a dollar for too long. If you're under a dollar too long, they'll yank you off the major exchange and throw you down to the OTC. Now they can fix the problem. All they got to do is get the price up over a dollar for 10 consecutive days and they're out of hot water or do a reverse split. Looks like we got a better chance of getting up over a dollar. Their deadline is April of next year. So fingers crossed, we don't hear about no reverse splits. 
And then we've got a bunch of Form 4s here that came out today. These are actually for paying taxes, if you can believe that. This is for the president and CEO of the company. He has just sold 462,000 shares at 66 cents. And it tells you right down here, represents common stocks withheld by the issuer to satisfy tax withholding requirements. Aren't you glad they don't do that to us? All right, let's take a look at that news now. So I have gone back here to August. The company increases performance of its newest quantum hybrid solver available in the Leap real-time quantum cloud service. And then we got a bunch of news here in October. D-Wave and Satispay aim to accelerate growth of leading European payment network through quantum-fueled customer rewards program. D-Wave showcases advantages of QPU's ability to improve cell phone network transmission. Like I said, quantum computing can do so much. We don't even know everything it can do. <laughs> I don't think I want to know everything it can do. There is the uh, notice from the New York Stock Exchange that they are in non-compliance. And then we had big news that came out five days ago. D-Wave and Quantum Basel extend agreement to accelerate commercial adoption and production use of quantum technology in Europe. D-Wave to open European office on Uptown Basel campus, facilitating increased development of near-term quantum applications for businesses, governments, and researchers. D-Wave and Quantum Basel, Switzerland's first quantum hub for commercial use embedded in the Uptown Basel Innovation Campus, today announced a two-year extension to the company's strategic relationship to further accelerate quantum and quantum hybrid application developments in Europe. In addition to Quantum Basel, D-Wave's European customers include Cock Holding, Satispay, Ponzine, Superconducting, Network Center, Seneca, as well as several other Forbes Global 2000 companies. And down here they say that they are all collaborating with esteemed technology partners like IBM, IonQ, and NVIDIA. This is a real big operation over there, folks. They are expanding quantum computing to Europe. D-Wave has only been over here primarily, and now she's really working over there. And as I said, I don't know all the capabilities and possibilities with quantum computing, but I'm sure we're going to hear about it. Let's go take a look at that chart. We're now taking a look at a six-month, four-hour chart for D-Wave, ticker QBTS. And we got a lot of volatility in here. She can't make up her mind what she wants to do. She was in a downtrend here till she hit this 52-week low of about 40 cents. And she bounced off of that with a lot of vigor. We were in a strong uptrend for a couple of months. She hit a high of $3.20 before falling back to $1.90, bouncing and then crashing all the way down here to about 59 cents. Now off of this low, underneath all of the SMAs, she has pushed herself all the way up on top of the 50 and looking strong, looking like she wants to climb. Our volume is getting stronger. Our oscillators, they're pushing up. We got a crossover on our PPO. Our MACD just crossed the signal line, lots of big green bars, and our RSI is clear up to 68 right now. Taking a look at that 20-day, one-hour view, we got a high here of $1.15 when she was on top of the 200, and then had that big fall down here to $0.57, cents. and in the one-hour chart, she's in the breakout mode. She has pushed through all of the SMAs and pushed right to that 200. Look at that nice jump. She wanted to get up there in a hurry, and she has not come back down. She is bouncing all over that, and now she is pushing away from the 200, riding on her nine-day SMA. You can't climb unless you're on top of the nine. This is looking sweet. Look at all of those SMAs, so beautifully combed, all getting ready to cross that 200-day SMA. Those are all going to be golden crosses, giving some oomph to the power of the price. The oscillators, they're still looking good. Our PPO is climbing slowly. Our MACD is bouncing right now. She did fall, but she's bouncing up, and our RSI is still hot, up there at 64. Five day, five minute. Look at that. Downtrend here from about 80 cents, down to 57 cents, 
back up to 84, a full bowl right there. And she looks like she is ready to climb, folks. This could be a nice recovery. Our oscillators, they say she's falling right now. Not hard, but everything is pointing down. I like QBTS for a recovery. I think for the short term, you're going to make some money on this. In the long term, God only knows what is going to go on. And I know you want to do more due diligence on this. Go check out those videos. Uh, the CEO of the company is uh, Jordy. Oh, I can't remember his last name. But uh, just put in quantum computing lecture. You will find it. Now, there's other stocks we looked at today. They need more due diligence too. So don't cheat yourself, folks. It's your money you're investing, right? The more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya. Thank you.